I am Megan, and I am 35 years old, and I am working as a researcher. I don't have any special skills, but I have been studying hard since I was a child. I got married a year ago. We don't have any children. I reunited with my husband, Chris, at our high school reunion, and we started dating. In high school, he was a heartthrob, good looking, stylish, athletic, and he was the captain of the football team. He stood out in his class. He even had a fan club from another school, and all the girls in the class liked him. Of course, I was one of them. However, I was never the one to stand out, and I think I only had a few conversations with him in high school. I thought he was someone who lived in a different world than mine. Hey, Megan! I didn't recognize you. You look great! I remember how happy I was when he approached me. It felt like I was back in high school again. I think I had more conversations there than I did in the four years of high school. I love to travel, and Chris's hobby is to travel also, so we were talking non stop about it. Since just talking at the reunion wasn't enough, we made a plan to meet each other, and from then on, we started to date. For his age, Chris aged well. And he still sparkled just like when he was in high school. According to Chris, he works in sales for a small business. I was very happy and enjoyed my time spending with Chris for a year, then we decided to get married. In that year, we traveled a lot. Since we are at a perfect age to get married, it was only natural for us to decide on getting married to each other. Being with Chris always made me feel like I was up in the air. However, I was only happy until I got married to him. I loved Chris, but I was not a fan of my sister in law, Victoria. Victoria has been divorced twice, and right now, she is in our neighborhood, living all on her own. She has experience in modeling and is so beautiful that it is hard to believe that she is in her 40s, even though her personality is not exactly beautiful. I found out after I got married to Chris, but I think Chris loves his sister. I think he loves her a bit too much. His parents have moved since he graduated from high school, and the parents in law live very far away. My parents in law are very kind and gentle people, so when I went to greet them, they were very gracious and hospitable with me. Since Victoria and Chris were late borns, maybe the parents in law has spoiled them a bit too much. I have only met my parents in law on the day I visited to greet them, but we have a very good relationship with occasional phone calls. Victoria was not there when I greeted her parents, so this was my first time the three of us had dinner together after Chris and I got married. Since she was very beautiful, when I saw her for the first time, I couldn't stop staring at her. But then, when she spoke to me, this ruined my good impression of Victoria. Huh? I thought you were a sucker for beautiful girls. When she saw me for the first time, she questioned Chris by saying that. I could only laugh it off. Chris didn't really deny what Victoria has said about me, and he started to compare Victoria and I. And made fun of me, being a very different person from when he is with me alone. Now that you have such a beautiful sister, Megan, 
You should learn how to be beautiful from her. Victoria works very hard to stay beautiful. Learn a lot from her. While Victoria is a formal model, Megan is a researcher. What a plain job. <laughs> Chris has never made any comments about my appearance nor of my work when we were together alone. I don't know if it was because of the alcohol or the presence of Victoria, but of course, I didn't feel great about it. I think my face was twitching for the whole time when I was with them. I wanted to cry. Hearing what Chris has said, Victoria just looked happy and was looking very proud about it to me. You guys are a brother and sister, but Chris and I are a married couple. We have a completely different relationship, so Victoria shouldn't have that kind of look to my face. But I just smiled and thought that if I endured it just for a few more hours, this will be all over soon. After we got home, I said to my husband, What you said today to Victoria about me, wasn't it too horrible? I was about to cry. When I said that to him, he didn't hear me and just said, Victoria is my pride and joy. Wasn't she beautiful? He was speaking such nonsense. I was just stunned and couldn't say anything back to him. Since then, Victoria started to visit us at our house frequently. After my work, I bought food for dinner and hurried home to find Chris and Victoria eating dinner. It seems like Victoria cooked the dinner. The dinner looked like it was very stylish and healthy. I thought it was strange because my husband and I were supposed to be home around the same time, so I asked him about it and he told me that he had given Victoria the copy of the key. The dinner will be prepared before you get back home, isn't it great? You don't have to go through the burden to cook. Chris says this, but Victoria cooks just enough for the two of them, but barely leaves some for me. I don't know Megan's likings, and I was afraid she won't enjoy it, so I only left small amount for you. Besides, you need to lose some weight anyways, so... Everything is fine, right? She said that she left a few, but she only leaves me about one bite of what she cooks. Chris doesn't realize this and just enjoys eating her food. Even if Megan tried for a hundred years, she won't be able to cook like you, Victoria. <laughs> he said this as he laughed. Victoria left quickly right after eating without cleaning up. After Victoria uses the kitchen, it always seems like a storm directly hit our kitchen. After cleaning up the mess Victoria has left behind, I cooked my own dinner and ate. Victoria comes over to our house every day now, so even when my co-workers supports me to finish early to go home since I was a newlywed, I deliberately started to do more of the overtimes. Then one day, I had a realization. Chris and I each have one credit card that we use for living expenses. However, this credit card was overcharged, so I checked my bill statement and I found that several hundred dollars worth was being frequently used at a high-end supermarket. Since Chris does not cook at all, I don't think he is the one who is going to the high-end supermarket. I thought it must have been Victoria's doing, so I questioned Chris, but he said, We're family, why not? 
Since I am the one eating, this is well counted as our living expense. He just replies that and does nothing about the situation. I didn't like Chris when he is with Victoria. Because no matter what I say, Chris always takes Victoria's side. But I love Chris when he is not around Victoria. Other than the topic of Victoria, he would listen and hear me out what to say, so I love spending the time with Chris when Victoria is not around. One day, we were planning a domestic trip for our wedding anniversary. We had talked about wanting to go to this certain place someday since we were dating. Since we have made this plan to go on the trip for a couple months now, I have been looking forward to it. Even though I was irritated with Victoria and Chris when they were together, I was able to put up with them because of this trip. Chris was also excited about this trip and he told me that he was able to book the Hilton to stay. Chris and I also took the paid leave and got on the airplane and arrived at the destination. During the flight, we had some wine, checked the guidebook and was planning the trip out. I enjoyed our time alone so much. After getting off the airplane, we visited many touristy spots and took many photos. I felt like we were back in our lovey-dovey times and I was just very happy. In the afternoon, we have arrived at the Hilton. Since Chris wasn't checking in and was trying to head to the elevator, I said, Hey wait! We need to check in! I stopped Chris from heading to the elevator. Since we had few drinks, I think it's cute of Chris that he got a bit too drunk and forgot to check in. But then, to his response, I was very surprised. Don't worry, the check-in is already done. I didn't understand what he was saying, but when we arrived at our room, Victoria was there. She was drinking the coffee and nuts from our hotel room. What? Why are you here? I said it with a very loud voice. Victoria said, What? I can't be here? I wanted to come with you guys from the morning, but I had to run some errands, but now I'm done with the errands. I am here. She responded with a smile on her face. Chris invited Victoria to this trip behind my back. I didn't have the energy to get mad at Chris anymore. This time, I cannot forgive him anymore. With a grumpy face, I was just silently checking my phone out. Without any care to me, Chris and Victoria tour the hotel and discussed where they will be going tomorrow with excitement. After a while, Chris finally noticed that I was silent, so he panicked and said, The dinner seems extravagant. Before that, let's go to the gym and sauna to make ourselves hungry. Megan, go check out the sauna. Go with Victoria and have some fun. My husband insisted, so I had no choice but to go to the sauna with Victoria. I didn't even want to hear Victoria's voice, so I tried not to talk to her. I couldn't help but to feel like this trip was ruined, and this was the trip I had been looking forward for months. It is a trip that is meaningful to me because this trip was for just the two of us as a married couple. So, Victoria being there is just an annoyance to me. Without speaking, I arrived at the sauna, and when I was undressing, my sister-in-law spoke to me. Hey, did your personality become ugly too? Even though you are ugly, you smile so I thought you were the better one out of the uglies. You are already ugly, so at least make yourself sociable. 
Are you talking about yourself when you say that my personality is ugly? I replied to Victoria. I couldn't take it anymore. Victoria froze because this was the first time ever I spoke back to her with such manner. Ignoring Victoria, I took my shower and went into the sauna. This was when I realized that she was gone. When I left the sauna and returned to my hotel, Victoria was crying and Chris was angry. Why do you look relaxed and refreshed? You bully! You should just go home now! Victoria screamed at me with a teary voice. She was so childish, it was too funny. Chris was glaring at me. I heard you bullied my sister. Why would you do such thing? Bully doesn't have a right to enjoy this trip. This is what Chris said to me. Next to my angry husband, Victoria made a face of in your face, which Chris didn't notice. I think when she is in front of Chris, she's pretending that she is crying. I had no energy to say anything back to them. Fine, I'll go home. I wanted to go home anyways, even though I was the one who got bullied. I answered without any hesitation. I glared at my husband, but he just looked away. I was about to cry, but if I cried, I thought that would make me the loser, so I bit my lips and held the tears in. I wanted to leave this place as soon as possible, so I packed my bags in a hurry. Purposely, in a loud voice, Chris said, Here you go. Victoria, this is Megan and I's credit card. You can buy yourself anything from the shop. You can buy anything since Megan bullied you. I pretended not to hear this and left the hotel and hopped on the last airplane. As soon as I got on the plane, the tears I held it in came pouring out of my eyes. I became sad when I was remembering how Chris would not listen to me, but only listened to Victoria and believed everything she said. To my husband, his sister was more important to him than his wife. I have always thought so, but this time, I am convinced. I began to feel like an idiot and wasted my time for looking forward to this trip for several months. I was crying for a very long time. After I cried and let it all out, I decided that I didn't want to be family with them anymore. As soon as I got off the plane, I picked up my phone and called a certain place. Feeling somewhat liberated, I went to a grocery and bought many alcohols. As I got back home, I drank all the alcohols and was passed out without realizing. I was woken up because of the phone calls from Chris. It has been ringing a lot before I woke up, but since I was in my deep sleep, I couldn't notice them. Maybe I was just exhausted from yesterday. Even when I got out of the bed, the phone kept ringing, but instead of picking it up, I brushed my teeth. I didn't pick up his calls because I knew why Chris was calling me. When Chris and Victoria tried to check out from the hotel, No way! Why is this happening? I was able to use this yesterday. Are you joking me? I'm going to make a call. I bet they had a conversation like this. The credit card Victoria took out to pay for the stay was denied. Which as it should be. The phone call I made when I got off the plane was to the credit card company and I stopped the credit card. My salary was double my husband's. I was paying for all of the living expenses. The credit card which Chris has given Victoria was charged to my bank account. 
I have asked Chris to tip in for living expenses many, many times, but for this whole year, he never paid anything. The ownership of the credit card is me. I called the call center to inform them that I have lost my credit card, so I wanted it to be stopped. After ignoring the phone calls for a while, I picked up the phone and heard Chris and Victoria speaking in angry manner, which I couldn't understand because they were also speaking very fast. I thought my eardrums were going to burst because he was screaming at me. He must have been in a great hurry. Uh, this is my credit card. Since I didn't stay at the hotel, I don't need to pay. I said it in a cheerful voice. As soon as I said that, he said, I knew it was you. Stop joking around. What are you going to do about this? We can't go home. He was shouting. Thinking about him shouting made me laugh. Why don't you do some work at the hotel to pay off for the stay? Oh, by the way, we're getting a divorce. Bye! As I said that, I hung up and turned off my phone. Then, I got ready, went to the bureau to pick up the divorce papers and packed my husband's belongings. I was humming without realizing. By that time, I was no longer sad at all and was looking forward to being single again. Then, Victoria and Chris came home. Don't be stupid. Do you know how embarrassed we were? Wow, your personality is truly ugly. What you did was just so malicious. Did you enjoy humiliating us? You're just too horrible. From the entrance, they were both shouting and yelling at me. They were both angry as if they had forgotten that they had told me to leave and go home in the middle of the trip. I put on my calm face and answered, I don't care what you guys have to say anymore. We are getting a divorce, so sign this paper. As you wish, you two will be able to live together on your own. The two ignored me and started talking about the hotel fee. It's a suite room from the Hilton. The hotel fee is so pricey since they depended on my credit card to pay, they were unable to pay and asked the hotel to allow them to pay later. As he put the hotel bill in front of me, he says, You should pay this. This is billed to your name, Chris. Since Chris was the one who made the reservation, of course, the bill was billed under his name. I can't pay such high fee. That's because you didn't choose accordingly to your income. Since you haven't paid any expense fee at all, you should have some savings, right? Oh, wait a minute. You don't. You're still paying off your debts. I think you pretended not to hear me, so I will say it again. We are getting a divorce. I will also be compensating for alimony. When I was packing up his belongings, I found documents about his debts. The reason why he was so stubborn about not paying his living expenses was because of his debts. The amount exceeded $50,000. He was paying back the debt with most of his salary each month and borrowed some money to pay off the shortfall. He had been hiding this fact from me for this whole year we have been together. My husband has talked a lot about the trip he went on when we reunited at the reunion. Even though he was the same age as me, I traveled many more times compared to him and he told me that he always only used business class for travel. When we got married and I found out about his income, I couldn't understand how he was able to have an extravagant trip, but then I understood that he made debts for it. This trip was also extravagant too, but it was dependent on my income. When Victoria heard about the debt, she was speechless with disbelief. 
You have a horrible taste. You went through my documents? No way. I am not leaving. This is also my house. If you don't like it, you get out. Huh? Don't you remember? This house is under my name. I packed all of your belongings for you, so get out. If you don't leave, I will call the police on you. When we rented the house, my husband gave me documents to fill it out with my name. I thought this was because I had a higher income than him, but it's because he was scared that he wouldn't get the house due to his debts. After hearing the word police, Chris and Victoria left the house with a divorce paper. When they were at the door leaving, I yelled at them, I will be sending your belongings to Victoria's house. I hope you two will get along. I told them with a very loud voice. I didn't get any answer from them, but I felt so much better. After that, my husband was so broke that he tried to file a divorce settlement and ask for alimony, but his request was denied and I was the one who got the alimony. It was quite ugly to see my husband telling many lies about what was and was not true, being very desperate for alimony in the divorce settlement. It was a moment that reminded me that people are not always about the outlook. I became single again. I continue to travel and going to places on my own is my greatest refreshment in my busy life. I recently started dating a co-worker from work. He may not be good looking, but he has a very nice personality. He has helped me many times since I joined the company and I respect him a lot. Although I am not planning to get married yet, I am very happy now. He seems to have an older sister, so I am going to make sure to meet and get to know her before we get married.